Hello and welcome to the course on dealing with materials data. In the past we have seen uh, various sessions of uh, uh, regression, we are continuing with it. This is the fourth session on regression analysis. <coughs> Let us have a quick, quick review of what we have done in the past. We introduced simple linear regression model and its parameter estimation and its inference. Uh, inference particularly on the regression coefficients that are uh, called alpha and beta there, uh, mean response and the predicted value. Uh, then we also discuss the coefficient of determination uh, which actually decides as to how much of uh, the response variable is explained by the input variable x. And we showed the relationship between coefficient of determination and correlation coefficient. Coefficient of determination is always written as r square is equal to the correlation coefficient square or in other words the absolute value of correlation coefficient is equal to the square root of coefficient of determination. Then we talked about very briefly how to approach the problem of uh, linear regression. That is once you get a data, how you go about doing it and finally how do you know that what you have done is correct and that is through checking the assumptions that we have made while going through regression analysis on the errors. And uh, these assumptions are randomness of error normality of error and common variance. So, we have gone through this exercise before. In this session, we will see that certain models which are not directly a linear model can also be transformed through mathematical transformation to a linear regression model. We will have an example, we will learn it through example. Then we will introduce multiple regression model and how the parametric estimation can take place and what is the way to do the uh, inference on the regression parameter. Then we will introduce polynomial regression as a special case of multiple regression model. And then finally, just to give a taste that what happens when the assumption of normality fails. Uh, let us recall that all this analysis that we have done, it actually takes into account the fact that we have assumed the response variable follows a normal distribution and suppose that uh, assumption fails. Then one example we wish to give is the logistic regression model. We will not go into great details about it, however, it is a special case, a case in the class of generalized linear model just to get a taste of it as to regression models are all not linear and there are treatments to be given available in statistics for such generalized linear model. So, let us uh, begin. We take as I said transformation to linearity through a case study or a case of fatigue crack goes. The Paris relationship which is an empirical relationship for fatigue crack growth rate per fatigue cycle under linear elastic fracture, fracture mechanics is given by this formula. Where A is the length of crack, N is the number of fatigue cycle. Delta K is a rate of stress intensity factor. So, this uh, delta K is fixed and then you get a rate of change of crack, crack per cycle. So, the data comes, let us look at it. The data comes as you will have delta K as independent and dA by dN that is rate of change of crack growth per fatigue cycle becomes the response variable. 
Now as it can be seen that typical data has these two values with us and therefore as I had mentioned here we have this relationship that delta k is independently fixed and corresponding dA by dN is obtained. So, how do we transform this to linearity? Well, in Paris relationship what we can do is take a log transformation on both sides, sorry, we again go back to the pen. Uh, if you take the logarithm of the Paris equation, it turns into a linear equation which says that log of dA by dN is equal to log of constant C plus m times log of delta k. Uh, as mentioned here C and m are called various coefficients. So, here if you look at it this can be seen as y is equal to alpha plus beta x where x is log of delta k y is log of dA by dN. So, what we are trying to show here is that in the Paris relationship shown in the previous slide, in the Paris relation show, shown here can be transformed into a linear relationship through log transformation. And once having done that, you can follow the re regression model in which log c, okay, this is a game of pen and arrow, log c and m can be estimated through least squares estimate using linear regression model. Simple, this is because there is only one element simple regression linear regression. So, this is how you can approach it. What happens after that? This is a plot, it actually shows you the plot, sorry, this shows you a plot. These are the data points, the blue are all the data points of this side is log of dA by dN and this is log of delta k which is shown here, log of delta k which is shown here. And then these are the log of dA by dN by versus log of delta k de, uh, data points. This is the straight line which we have estimated over it and we have on top of that we have shown these two lines. Uh, let us convert it into arrow. This will show the two lines which are actually you recall we had the upper bound and lower bound. In other words, we had a confidence limit over estimated value of the beta that is the parameters uh, regression parameters and we also had it for the mean response. So, this line actually gives a mean response line and these are the upper bound and lower bound. The, the outer one is a 99 percent lower upper and lower bound while the inner one is a 95 percent upper and lower bound. What really this shows is that the data more or less except for a few points like this, this and this most of the points are lie, lie between 95 percent confidence limit 
it means that our model is correct. And if you exactly put it without the logarithmic transformation, it says that dA by dN which is y is equal to 8 times 10 to the power minus 9 multiplied by delta k to the power of 2.89 and the r square is almost 99 percent. So, it shows that you have a good fit for the data. Uh, let us move on. <coughs> there is another example in which we would like to talk about weighted least squares. Now, it would be nice if you recall in the previous session, we said that when you want to test the hypothesis, you want to test the assumption not the hypothesis, you want to test the assumption that there is no heteroscedasticity. In other words, we want to test this assumption that variance of epsilon which is same as variance of response variable y is sigma square. So, even if the y changes with different values of i for i is equal to 1, 2, etcetera, etcetera n, the sigma remains constant. And if you recall, we had also shown a plot like this in which we said that if the standardized standardized residuals, please recall standardized residuals, if these are the standardized residuals and this is the number of data point that is number first data point, second data point etcetera. And if it shows a relationship as shown here then there is a chance of what is known as heteroscedasticity. So, when such a thing happens, you take the variance of epsilon i, suppose it is a constant divided by a weight w i. So, sigma square is still constant, the variation of i comes from a common factor. In other words, sigma square is a common factor and with every data point i is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the value changes proportionally. In that case, the least squares estimator needs to minimize this particular equation. That is the say this, you please recall this is the same equation as before, but then we have to normalize it with variance of y i. And variance of y i if we call this that this is divided by w i, then it becomes the 1 over sigma square comes out and this becomes the equation to be minimized. And this relation to be minimized please remember w i is a given value, it is not to be estimated. The two things to be estimated are a and b. And therefore, you can follow again the process that we follow for linear uh, simple linear regression. We take the partial derivatives with respect to A and with respect to B and we get these two equations. And these two equations need to be solved simultaneously as a uh, to find a solution for A and B which I think is a very simple algebraic question and we will not go into details of it. Okay. Uh, let us move on. Uh, let us move on to the next issue of multiple regression. So, let us recall that uh, originally we considered this equation and we said that first let us deal with a simple regression linear regression by taking only beta 0 and beta 1 and at some point to make our life simple notation simple we call them alpha and beta. Let us consider the full case of the response variable y which is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus and so on 
plus beta k x k. So, beta 0, beta 1, beta k are the some constant they are also called regression coefficients these are also known as regression coefficients. Epsilon again represents the random error with the same assumption that the expected value of random error is 0 and it has a common variance sigma square. Then to find the solution the least squares estimates for this regression coefficient we set up an equation which is if we assume that b0, b1, b2 etc, etc, bk are the estimates least squares estimate for beta 0, beta 1 etc, etc up to beta k then this is the estimated value of y and this is the actual value of y. We take the difference of the two square it and then we minimize it. Then what happens? Uh, Let us move on. We get k simultaneously simultaneous linear equations to be solved for k plus 1 parameters you see there are I am sorry there are k plus 1 equations sorry there are k plus 1 unknowns and we have k plus 1 equations. in k plus 1 unknowns. So, it is a case of solving a simultaneous linear equations for k plus 1 unknowns and these linear equations look like this and this is again a problem of a solving simple algebraic issue. Uh, this can also be presented in a different notation. So, if we go to the matrix notation you must have done it even to solve the li simultaneous linear equation when you studied that in the your uh, previous uh, degrees. If we say that y a vector y is the n y observations. So, y 1, y 2, y 3, y n matrix x which is please recall this is n by k plus 1 please remember uh, let us write it down the size of it this is n by 1 this is n by k plus 1 remember the plus 1 comes because of 1 and why do we have 1 1 1 because it is beta 0 everywhere. So, the we have <coughs> here I have made a mistake it should have been with beta 0 ok please correct this. So, we have this uh, vector um, the matrix n by k 1 vector beta is k plus 1 by 1 and epsilon is once again n by 1. So, you can see that this equation can be set up it the dimensionally it matches this is n by 1 this is n by k plus 1 this is k plus 1 by 1. So, the multiplication is n plus n by 1 and then epsilon is n plus 1. So, we have the matrix equation to be solved and this can be solved by multiplying both the sides if you put in place of beta you put a b that is b is equal to your estimator betas b0, b1, b2 dot 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 bk then this is your b. So, you find that x prime x b 
is equal to x prime y. It is just multiplying the both the sides replacing this by b. So, epsilon goes away. Uh, in other words, we are considering uh, uh, the estimated relationship. So, here the relationship to be considered is x b and therefore, x prime y is equal to x prime x b that is what is written here. And therefore, if x prime x is invertible and we are assuming that it is the uh, invert the x prime x is invertible, then b is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y. And this can be solved using matrix algebra. <coughs> okay, let us move on. In this case also expected value of b if you look at it just as in the case of a linear equation just please uh, it is interesting that you look at it uh, this equation again particularly this equation again sorry uh, okay you look at this equation again this sounds just like the equation we had written for the linear simple linear regression equation. So, simple linear equation say that y i is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon. So, this you can write as beta 0 beta 1 sorry here you have to write x 1 x 2 this is the prime one this plus epsilon. So, this equation and this equation are equivalent equations and going by that you will see that again in the same fashion the expected value of beta or expected value of b not beta is expected value of x prime x inverse x prime y. Now, x prime x inverse x prime this is a constant therefore, it is expected value of x prime x inverse x prime expected value of y and therefore, this becomes x prime x inverse x prime you remember expected value of y is x beta and therefore, this turns out to be beta because this cancels each other. Similarly, we can show that if you define a constant uh, uh, a matrix C as x prime x inverse x prime then C C prime is x prime x inverse these are very simple calculations. So, I am going to leave it to you for verifying it. Then the covariance variance covariance matrix of beta is sigma square times x prime x inverse I think this also you can work it out. The residual our point of interest because we do all the testing using residuals. So, the residual sums of squares S S R is a summation of y i minus the estimated value square and uh, here also we can show that sums of squares of residual divided by sigma square follows chi square distribution with n minus k minus 1 degrees of freedom. Please remember n is number of data points k plus 1 parameters estimated from n data and therefore, the degree of freedom remains is n minus k plus 1 which is n minus k minus 1. So, this calculation should be clear to you and therefore, expected value of sums of squares of residual divided by n minus k minus 1 which is the degree of freedom is sigma square. With this let us move to polynomial regression. 
I want to show that polynomial regression is actually a one special case of multiple linear regression. So, here we write it down as y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square plus and so on beta k x to the power k plus epsilon. Now, beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta k are some constants or we say that they are regression coefficients and epsilon represents the random error in the relationship with the same assumption that expected value of epsilon is 0 and variance of epsilon is sigma square. Then we say that this can also be written as y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 z 1 plus beta 2 z 2 and so on beta k z k where z sub p is equal to x to the power p for p is equal to 1 to k. And thus you can see that this is nothing but multiple regression equation, multivariate it transforms into multiple regression equation, it transforms into multiple regression equation and it can be solved same as before, but please remember the matrix X is going to be numerically heavy because it is going to have powers of x and therefore the numbers are going to be large and therefore this needs sometimes special treatment to solve the uh, matrix equation, the simultaneous linear equations. However, if you have k is equal to 2, 3 or 4, it is simpler to solve the equations, uh, the simple simultaneous equation and come to this solution without using matrix algebra. Now we come to the final case as I said. So far we have been making assumption that y follows a normal distribution, y is a response variable and it follows a normal distribution with a variance uh, the mean value as a regression model and a variance as a sigma square. If sigma square varies proportionally with the data then we treated it as a weighted least squares. But otherwise we assume that there is no heteroscedasticity and they are the same this is what we have assumed in our course. Now consider the case where the experiments are performed at various levels of input and your response y is either success or failure or it is defective or non-defective. In such cases, if you can express the probability of success in this equation, sorry, if you, if you are able to express your probability success in this equation, then such a model of experiment is called regression logistic regression model. Please remember this is a very specific case. This is just to give you a taste that life is not all linear regression models. There are generalized models and this is one of them. Let us go to the next slide. How do you estimate the parameters? We say that let y be the response of experiment from logistic regression model. And then you can express it by a Bernoulli trial. You see it is a Bernoulli trial, it is a success and failure. So if there are yi successes and pxi is a probability of success of yi, then you say that pxi to the power yi multiplied by 1 minus pxi to the power 1 minus yi, this gives you the uh, model for estimation 
and the parameters to be estimation when you put the p x i as expressed earlier if p x i is exponential to the power a plus b x i divided by 1 plus exponential to the power a plus b x i and this a and b are our unknowns then this is the equation which you need to uh, use to estimate alpha a and b and this a and b can be estimated best estimated by using maximum likelihood estimation and the log likelihood of the function is given by this. You can see that this is a nice linear part. This introduces a little difficulty. So, you can use any method like gradient descent or one such method of estimation uh, and uh, get the uh, approximate value of estimated value of a and b. So, with this we come to an end of this session. Let us quickly summarize. We worked on first transformation to linear regression model and we took the case of Paris equation where the log transformation transformed the Paris equation into a simple linear regression model and you can work out the analysis. Uh, estimate the Paris coefficients and uh, do your further analysis. The multiple regression model we saw that in matrix notation it is looks it is very similar to the simple linear model and you have to use matrix algebra to solve the matrix equation and come up with the least squares estimates. We also saw that polynomial regression model can be transformed into a multiple regression model and can be solved numerically using matrix algebra. However, because the terms are going to be uh, the powers of x the independent variable numerically it can become bit challenging. However, if you are the powers are 2, 3 or 4 the simple uh, linear models can be uh, system of linear equations can be solved. Finally, we saw an example a simple example of what happens when the normality assumption is not true. We took the case of a logistic uh, regression model which is an example of a generalized regression model and generally how it is approached. Thank you.